Hey guys, Matt with Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 50 cal gel block test series. And this episode is looking at the Hornady Board Driver FTX. This is the 290 grain FTX bullet. This is a 50 caliber bullet with the Board Driver skirt and the FTX tip in it. And uh, let's turn around and take a look at the loading and we'll head on out to the range. So, all right, we've got a similar setup as before with the uh, the ELD X board drivers. We've got the 209 primers, the Pirate X 5050 pellets, uh, the Hornady board driver FTX model in 290 grain. And these do come in 20 count packs. And similar to the, uh, the ELD X, which had a 12 round pack, uh, these same tubes hold five of these FTXs where they only held three of the ELD X bullets. And here is a good look at our actual bullet and the primers and the pellets. And we will be running a three pellet charge, a two pellet charge, and a one pellet charge. Uh, grabbing velocities for each of those with the Garmin Cero C1 Pro. And we will convert those into a range chart here at the end of the video, and it'll be posted up there in the slides. So stay tuned for that. Let's head on out to the range and see what these things will get into. All right, guys, next up is the Hornady Board Driver FTX. This is a 290 gram bullet, comes in a, a 20 count pack. And each one of these packs has a sleeve with five bullets in it, which makes it kind of handy to store. And uh, yeah, I mean, FTX, this thing should do wonderful. Uh, I've got the gel block flipped around out there. I've got the cloudier block in the front this time. Uh, this will probably be the last cycle uh, for this gel block. Uh, it's getting pretty cloudy. Hopefully we'll be able to see. I've got the uh, the block from the previous test in the back is a catch block. It's got all kinds of shards and everything from the board driver ELDX bullet in it. Uh, got it cleaned up to use as a catch block. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started here again. So once again, uh, our format's gonna be a three pellet shot, a two pellet shot, and a single pellet shot. Uh, getting velocities along the way. And I've got a three pellet load already charged up in the gun, ready to go. So let's see what we get. So that's similar to what happened last week, except I think I got the footage this time. Uh, velocity of 1,852.6 foot per second. And uh, let's go see if we actually got a catch somewhere in the mess down here. All right, guys, so I uh, got this gel block up off the ground <clears throat> and uh, got all the gravel and the brass and the trash more or less cleaned off of it. And But I've got fingerprints and smears and swipes all over. Every time you touch this block, it, it goes cloudy. So what I'm going to do now is uh, take this torch. Some of the grass off too. All right. Hey, 
Here's the entry wound. This is the three pellet load of the 290 grain FTX bullet. And uh, expansion starts immediately. Looks like we've got really good expansion going on here by about an inch in. Uh, nice, large, permanent wound cavity out here to about four, four and a half inches. Uh, and then a lot of these fragments fall off. And then the main portion of this bullet keeps driving forward. Looks like it might be spinning and tumbling a little bit there between five and eight, nine inches. Got a few lead shards. And here is our final resting spot. Looks like we've got about 15, 15 inches of, uh, of penetration overall on this. So this nice big mushroom expansion on this, this is a really good looking profile for this bullet. We've got a nice big permanent wound channel up front. We've got 15 inches of penetration in, in most deer, unless you get a really long quartering shot, this is gonna be a pass through. And, uh, you know, just good performance here out of this three pellet load. So let's go back and try the two pellet and see if we can keep the job lock on the table this time. All right, guys, next up is the uh, two pellet load of the Hornady Bore Driver FTX 290 grain bullet. And we had some pretty, pretty wild results earlier with the three pellet load with the job lock coming completely off the table. Um, I want to adjust the gel blocks real quick. So my last range session, I tried to put some center blocks underneath my plywood to, uh, to get that, the, the gel blocks up higher to make it easier to get a, a, a parallel shot running, running through the gel blocks. And that didn't go very well either. All right, I want to shoot this one. I'm going to attempt to run this one down the right-hand side of the gel block and save the single pellet shot for the top center since it's so hard to see in this block. We stayed on the table that time at least. And we got a velocity of 1,694 foot per second with the two pellet load. All right, guys, a two pellet load. Again, we've got almost immediate expansion going here. We've got a really nice big permanent wound cavity down about four inches. Uh, a lot of lead shards laying in this five to six inch area. Uh, coming on down, we've got another big lead chunk here at around 17 inches. And that bullet also skips off the table right here about 18 inches and rides right across the top to stop at about 22 inches. So needless to say, we probably would have had another inch or two of, uh, of penetration here if, uh, if it hadn't gone down and slid into the table. And there's that bullet. And some more lead falling out back here too. So, uh, This one was pretty easy to recover. I'll go ahead and set it out of the way. That way we won't take a chance on losing it on the last shot. So, all right. So three pellet out here at about 14 and a half, 15 inches, somewhere in that neighborhood. And the two pellet drove down to about 21, 22 inches. Let's go see what the one pellet does. All right, guys, we're getting ready to finish this up with the uh, one pellet shot with the, uh, the uh, 290 grain Four driver FTX bullet from Hornady, and uh, let's see if we can go three for three on velocities this time. All right, that was pretty uneventful compared to our first two shots. <laughs> Lots of powder. 
<coughs> wind blowing back just the right direction on that one. Velocity of 932.9 feet per second, and pretty sure we got a catch, so let's go check it out. All right, guys, so entry wound was right here, and we had a little bit of a down angle going on. Looks like this bullet it probably opened up just a little bit in this area right here that's about 10 inches out uh, probably had some end over end rotation and flip looks like we lost our plastic skirt out here at about 27 and a half 28 inches and guys this was a shoot through right here's our exit hole so we had some action in the middle of the wound track on this one uh, right here about now well, starting up around 12 to 14 inches, and again from about 17 to, to 20 inches, and I'm guessing that bullet is probably uh, uh, maybe flipping end over end as it went through. And again, right here, we, we had a, a flip probably uh, that was enough to, uh, to pull the plastic skirt off the base of it. And I'm sure he's laid out here on the backstop somewhere. So, all right, guys, that wraps up the, uh, the 290 grain bore driver FTX bullet test. And, uh, Let's get reset and try another another bullet here in a minute. All right, guys, back to the shop, and we got these dug out now. So here's our results. This is a three-pellet charge. This is the two-pellet charge, and the only thing we had left on the one-pellet charge was the bore driver skirt. Uh, these things, I don't know if you noticed in the ELDX video, if you've watched that one, uh, very first shot, one of these come flying back, uh, back toward uh, toward me at the shooting bench. And you can see that on the down the bore shot and on the, the slow motion shot, you can see this thing bouncing off the front of the gel block and heading right back toward me. A couple of these have actually bounced all the way back and hit the, uh, the siding on the building uh, on the porch where I'm sitting. And uh, you know, there's no weight to them, no real danger there, but it's just pretty neat that the, the gel block was kicking them back that far. Um, so with a pass through, the skirt was the only thing we had left on the one pellet load. Now I will say this, both of these bullets separated from the jacketing while I was retrieving them. And you can see there, you get a good look at these. Uh, but this is pretty significant expansion here. And this is a really nice expansion here too. One thing to note, is not a huge amount of shrapnel. Uh, unlike the ELD X bullets, they had tons of, of uh, copper and shrapnel, lead shrapnel. Uh, these FTX bullets do not shed near as much weight. So they, they did a whole lot better in weight retention than the ELD X bullets did. All right guys, so uh, the 290 grain FTX bullet, this is it at 15 feet or three yards. This is uh, a little over nine tenths of an inch of expansion. And, and that, that looks really good. This, this uh, copper jacket has rolled all the way back around behind that and everything. And I mean, it really has uh, devastated that bullet uh, as far as opening it up and expanding it back. But then the two pellet charge drops down to about six tenths uh, expansion uh, the copper folds back nicely, but the bullet just uh, it just doesn't lay back that much farther. And uh, here's the thing: this is equivalent to uh, to about 40 yards. So a three pellet load at 40 yards is going to go from nine tenths expansion down to six tenths expansion. And uh, so that's a that's a pretty good drop off on this bullet. And you know. That's a good bullet. I, I run FTX in my 44 mag and 357 and uh, 4570. Uh, just a uh, just a good bullet all the way around. And I actually took a deer with one a couple of years ago. It just did amazing. Um, so I'm not knocking this bullet. I'm saying that in the muzzle loader, uh, the expansion on this thing has fallen off pretty quick. So. Of course, we didn't get any expansion with a one pellet load, but it shows just taking off out there uh, all the way out to like 200, 250 yards uh, with no expansion. So, you know, this bullet will reach out, but you're not going to get very much expansion out past, 
I'm guessing 100 to 150 yards. Uh, so, you know, I, there again, I, and we've said this on multiple videos that I've done so far, there's a big gap between a 50 pellet charge and a 100 pellet charge. And a lot of the data and everything that I would like to be getting is in that, in that in between, uh, somewhere in that 75 yard. Uh, actually had planned on shooting, uh, shooting a 75 grain load of granulated powder on, on these tests, uh, these last few tests, but I didn't have any power decks on hand. I actually went and looked and I had, I had black horn and, and triple seven, but I didn't have any power decks. So it, it really wouldn't have been a, a, a fair comparison without having the, exa the, the same brand of powder. So, uh, anyway, just, uh, that's something I, I wish I'd had on hand when I, when I started this, this last round of testing. Uh, so Hornady, Board driver FTX 290 grain. Uh, these are good bullets. I mean, if you're staying inside the traditional muzzleloader ranges of 50 to 100 yards max, uh, these are probably going to work fine. You're going to get a, a little bit of expansion and you're going to get good penetration uh, because with lower expansion, your penetration goes up. So, you know, when we do give up penetration, we're usually gaining expansion. And that's something to remember. You know, we may not get the expansion that we want, but we are going to get penetration. And the two in combination both work to, to bring down the game that we're hunting. So, all right, guys, questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And, uh, you know, uh, as always, thanks for watching. And Matt from Kentucky Range Time, we'll catch you on the next one.